Hey YouTube, this is Thinking of Pi. I'm going to be doing something a bit different today. I was really planning on showing you the 8x8 LED matrix, but I was clearly getting shorts in the breadboard, so it just wasn't going to happen. I might try to get back to that next week, but for now, I want to take you through a project that I've been working on for the past couple of months. Still in the development phase, um, I'll be doing weekly videos on this project over the next few months. There's a lot of different components to it, so let's jump in here. I'm going to be building a high altitude balloon. Um, it's a balloon that can carry a payload, a payload up to extremely high altitudes. Uh, the balloon is filled with helium. It can go anywhere from 80,000 feet up to 150,000 feet. The one that I'm going to be building will probably be going between 100 to 120,000 feet. These are often used for weather prediction. Um, weather services will send balloons up into the upper atmosphere to take readings of different elements in the atmosphere to predict the weather. They're also used for research, photography, and over 1,600 balloons are released every day. So let's talk for a minute here about the design of the balloon. Uh, the balloon itself is made of latex. Then there's a parachute. You can see in the picture here that the parachute is in line with the balloon and the payload. It doesn't hang off to the side. Um, you can get drone parachutes to attach the payload to um, eject a parachute at specific times, but this method is going to work the best. Um, we do need to have a radar deflector so that airplanes and the FAA and um, different organizations like that know where it is. You don't want any planes hitting it. That would be bad. We then have a payload that is connected at the bottom that is filled with various sensors. Uh, multiple cameras, tracking, and communication equipment. Uh, the balloon itself, like I said, is made out of latex. They're filled with helium, and they're huge. The balloons are measured in their size by their weight. You can get balloons anywhere from 300 up to 3,000 gram balloons. That's just the weight of the latex itself. When they're fully inflated, they can be up to 30 feet in diameter. The size of the balloon will also determine the altitude at which the balloon will burst. The balloon floats up as high as it can, the atmosphere gets thinner, the gas inside the balloon expands, and then it bursts. And then it falls back down to the ground. The parachute like I said, goes in line with the balloon and the payload below. The parachute attaches uh, to a cord that attaches to the balloon, so you do have to have a specific type of parachute designed just for doing that. Um, the size of the parachute can be anywhere from 3 to 5 to 10 feet. I think I'm leaning towards using a 5-foot parachute talked about the attachment and I want to talk for a second here about the descent because when the balloon pops the atmosphere at that level is about one percent of what it is here on the ground the parachute is still useless until it gets down to about 30,000 feet so it's in complete free fall almost until it gets down to thicker atmosphere to where it can fully deploy and actually start to slow the payload down As far as the payload goes, I am going to be including my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to have an Adreno. They do work better for collecting data. So the Adreno will do all the data collecting. It will be connected to the Raspberry via USB. And then the Raspberry will log the data and control all the main operations. There's going to be a lot of sensors. I'll talk more about sensors in a minute. Um, the power supply will be inside the payload. 
We need power supply for the Raspberry, the Adreno, cameras, all that's going to be in there. It's going to take up the majority of the weight in the, in the payload. I intend to have at least two cameras, maybe more. I did order a Raspberry Pi camera that will connect directly to the Raspberry, and I've got a ton of great things planned for that. I think it's going to be probably one of the highlights of this whole endeavor. The payload is going to be constructed of, um, it's basically going to be a styrofoam box, and that's going to provide insulation when it gets up to altitude. It's going to be extremely cold. We're looking at temperatures somewhere around negative 70 Celsius. I need to have GPS because if I can't find it, what's the point? And communication equipment so that I can communicate with everything while it's up in the air. We do need to keep things as light as can be. Um, I'm aiming for 1500 grams, but I can probably make it with 2000 to 2500 grams as well. Talked a bit about the extreme conditions it'll endure. Um, it's going to be very cold, and something that most people probably wouldn't think of is the uh, low air pressure means that there's less molecules to conduct heat. So that also creates problems for possible overheating. I'll probably want to make sure I also track the uh, CPU temperature on the Raspberry too. That'll be interesting to see. And the cold and the lack of oxygen is going to have an effect on the battery and the sensors. So I want to keep the batteries insulated as best I can. So going into more detail here on the payload, um, we're going to have sensors measuring temperature, humidity, barometric pressure. There's going to be an accelerometer to measure the forces that are acting on everything. Um, an altimeter, because I want to know how high it actually goes. I am going to be doing an experiment on board with the speed of sound. Theoretically, if the atmosphere is getting thinner, sound will travel slower. So I'm going to be using an ultrasonic rangefinder, modify that a little bit, um, aim it at a target at a known distance, and then you can track the amount of time it takes for the signal to leave and then come back to the receiver and then do the math to calculate how fast that signal took. I'm thinking about putting some gas sensors on board, doing oxygen, CO2, and ozone but those sensors are kind of finicky, so I don't really know where that's going to go. Um, multiple cameras so I can take pictures like this. Um, I'm still kind of shopping around for cameras. I want something that's going to be good quality, but I don't want to buy a $400 GoPro. So if you have any suggestions, be sure to let me know. And the battery life is also going to be a huge concern with cameras, um, especially with an action camera like a GoPro, even the cheaper versions. Um, the entire flight is going to last anywhere from two to four hours, depending on how I decide to, or how much helium goes into the balloon and how fast it goes up and all that kind of stuff. Wind conditions, those are all going to affect the length of the flight, so battery life becomes a concern. I think with the cameras that I'm going to use, though, I'll be able to hook them up to a USB power supply so I can get much, much more battery life out of those to record everything that's going to be happening. Um, the tracking system is going to be quite a complex um, quite a complex uh, project by itself. Um, obviously GPS is going to be key, but I'm going to be using a technology called APRS, which is Automatic Packet Reporting System, and that's done over a radio frequency. Um, APRS and the radio frequency that it's on actually requires um, a license in most countries. Um, I recently got my license to operate an amateur radio last week, so I am on track to get that all figured out. You cannot put a cell phone in the balloon payload using GSM or any kind of cell phone technology because it is illegal per the FCC. Don't know what the laws are in other countries, but if you plan on doing this, make sure you check all laws and regulations pertaining to communications and aviation. 
So planning this is going to be quite a bit as well. Um, obviously, I want to make sure that all the equipment works. So I'll be testing everything. I think one of my um, tests is going to be actually taking the Raspberry Pi with some sensors attached to it, putting it in a box full of dry ice, and that will help simulate some of the conditions that it will be subject to at high altitudes. Um, picking a launch date is going to be tricky. Um, there are some simulation software that you can use online to predict where the balloon is going to go, how far it's going to go, how high it's going to go, all that kind of stuff. And also picking the location of the launch. Um, there's lots of regulations about doing it in or near a city or um, a certain distance from an airport and different um, airspace categories. So those are all things to take into consideration when picking the location. Weather plays a huge role. Um, wind speeds are different at different altitudes. It might be perfectly calm here on the ground, but you could have 100 mile an hour winds up in the air. I ran a simulation that actually put the balloon 250 miles away when it landed. I'd like to keep it under 100 miles away, so keeping tabs on the weather and the wind speeds at higher altitudes as well are going to play a huge factor in picking a date and time and place. And that also affects the landing. Um, in this picture that I've got on the screen is part of the region that I live in. And this is a um, aviation map. It, it displays different features that might impact um, your flight if you're flying an airplane or something. And you can see on the right hand side of the screen right here, those are actually windmills. Last thing I want to happen is my my uh, project getting caught up in a 100 foot tall windmill. So need to make sure I keep it out of that area. On launch day, the payload will get assembled. Everything will be attached using parachute, parachute cord. The balloon gets inflated and it will need to be grounded with weights and safety strings. And when it's ready to launch, you cut the strings and release it into the unknown. Everything will then be tracked using the APRS system. That'll be communicating GPS signals to the ground. It'll com be communicating the altitude that it's currently at. And I've got a set of computer software that seems it seems like it's going to work very well for tracking this whole process. It's going to have radio software. I've actually got um, what's called an SDR radio. That's software defined radio. It's a USB dongle that connects to an antenna and then translates that for computer software to be able to um, read the radio signals. So it goes from the radio software and then when the APRS data comes in it sounds like a fax machine so it's completely useless at that point. So I've got another piece of software that will decode that information into something understandable and then I have another mapping software that will communicate with the um, data decoder and actually strip it of the GPS data and put it on a map so it'll be easy to track and everything should go well. Should be able to get it back. However, another note on recovery is that with uh, radio communication, it only works if you have line of sight. So I'm considering having a secondary GPS tracker that does use cellular, but I'll have to rig it up so that it doesn't start transmitting until the payload has actually landed. So those are all going to be things to keep in mind with this balloon project. I'll start doing videos on this whole process in about a month. Next week I'm going to continue with the beginner series and I think I'm going to be doing a video on a temperature and humidity sensor. So probably be the same one that I used for this project, but I'll be showing you how to do it on the Raspberry Pi. So make sure you check that out next week. But you're not going to want to miss the balloon stuff here. This is going to be quite a process. I'm going to have 
probably a couple months worth of videos on this. So make sure you subscribe. You're not going to want to miss it. Um, if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, let me know in the comments below. And I'll talk to you all next week. Thanks.